Hey Lord of the Rings fans, welcome back to the channel. So I've been hearing a lot about this the War of the Ring official trailer. At first I thought it was for a video game, and then later I thought it was for a TV show. And if it was for a TV show I would not even bother if it's anything like Rings of Power. Then I wouldn't be very interested. But my son was telling me, yay, it's a, it's a car cartoon, Peter Jackson's helping with it, and all this. It's going to be a movie released in the near future. I think Christmas was one I heard. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll take a look at it. And right now, this is the first time I'm going through it. And we'll see what it's about. Okay, they got Peter Jackson Presents. They're giving a lot of the uh, stuff from Lord of the Rings, especially the Two Towers where you see Edder S. Kenji Kamiyama. Kamiyama? So 200 years before that, that would be the time of Helm the Hammerhand, if I'm not mistaken. Is that Wolf and Freka? So the daughter's in on it when that's not I mean, Helm killed him with like a single blow it supposedly and then Wolf I don't even think Wolf was there why they have a chicken in it already here there are so many of them what? Oh, elephants? No, already they've ruined it. You're kidding me. An elephant. What the hell's an elephant doing in Rohan? And the watcher in the water? What? She blows Helm's hand. Horn and rides out. Don't tell me she's going to kill Wolf. It's her brother that does this. Oh, this is dumb already. Okay, uh... First problem I have is that they're given the chick the main role. She's supposed to be a heroine. So they made it woke already. I understand you want to get the women involved in the movie. You want to give them a shot in the movie and also, you know, go with the woke culture, which is just ridiculous. You don't need it all the time. Women can enjoy this movie without a strong female character. Tolkien had strong female characters. He had Galadriel and Eowyn were the two strongest female characters in his book. He wasn't a feminist, but he wasn't against women as well. Like Luthien in the Silmarillion was a strong female character. Galadriel is more of a player in the back scene, which is why he didn't like Rings of Power. They made Galadriel into a warrior princess, considering the fact she never actually fought in any major battle or war. Elven women did not go to war. These are not Amazonians. Or Sarmatians. So I'm not too pleased with... Just looking at that, I was like, what the hell? Now, I like the idea that they... Helm the Hammer Hand, yeah, that's a pretty cool story. And that Rowan was going through a period where they were where a lot of Dunlendings had taken over the, the Ring of Isengard from the from the uh, Gun, hereditary Gondorian garrison that had been there, left basically isolated. 
and the, there are many Dunlending and Rohirrim mixed together in the Westfold, especially in the West March areas, where, which is where Freca was from. And he did seek the hand of the king's daughter for his son Wolf. Because Freca was a was a large landowner and it was getting was getting too big for his britches, which is what Helm didn't like. Because her father, Helm, and her brother died in the war, and her brothers died in the war, and then her son, her sister the sister son of Helm, was the one who led them in the dead of winter and defeated Wolf and his and his Dunlending allies. And Freca was just a really fat guy who was afraid of the king. When the king was angry, Helm had a terrible temper and was known to kill a man with one blow. And that's basically what happened. He struck Freca and killed him with one blow. And that's when Freca's supporters and his son Wolf rose up with a large Dunlanding force. Gondor at this time was also being assailed by the Corsairs of Umbar. So both Gondor and Rohan could not give, give aid to each other. It was a really long winter. So if this was 200 years ago from Lord of the Rings, that means also that it was the long winter in the Shire. When the old Took was around. And wolves were ravaging, were a problem in the Shire. So at the end... They made Freca into like, and he's dead. Wolf goes, and then trying to make Wolf into this, the boy I knew would never wish for war. No, he wasn't. He was half done lending, and then she's off fighting adventures. Like, come on. Now this I don't understand. Where the hell are they getting a Muma kill from? That's from the Deep South. You only ever see them in Lord of the Rings when Sauron brings one up. And the farthest north it gets is northern Nathalian before Faramir and his rangers ambush and kill one. I don't know why... The, in one way, I don't know why Mordor was bring, Sauron wanted to bring one up to the Black Gates where there's very little water. These things require a lot of water. Maybe to help in the crossing of the Andun at Carandros. But I personally think Peter Jackson made these things way too big for what they were. You know how big of a bridge you need to ferry one across? And have to be a stone bridge? I don't think a wooden bridge would handle these things. So this is already dumb, in my opinion. Oh. I pledged to fight for my king. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's some kind of siege tower. Trying to get over the walls of Helm's Deep. Because Helm and his army were trapped in Helm's Deep. Well, it wasn't called Helm's Deep. It was it was called something else. The Aglaron. Again, I don't know what the hell she's running from an elephant for. Jesus. And then to find the Watcher on the Water. Is she over in Moria now? Because that's not an end. Now she's climbing the Misty Mountains. Now we got Ryder. It totally goes against. It's like these guys never read the appendices in the back of the Lord in the Return of the King, or the Lord of the Rings. If you get one volume, there's the appendices in the back, which talks about that story. Or they and they never talk about, or they never looked at the appendices. They ah. So I'm already going to go say I'm not going to see it in the theater. I'm not going to pay money to see it. I'll wait till it comes out on Netflix and I don't... Or YouTube. Watch the whole thing. I am not a fan of this. The War of the Rohirrim. They could have picked... They should have picked a different topic like Errol the Young. When he came out of the North, the Northmen came and helped Syrian or Kyrian never know how to pronounce that C. The steward of Gondor needed help. He was facing off against the, the Balkoth. 
and northern Gondor was overrun, meaning Kalan Arden, the area that Rohan is now, was overrun, and Syrian was f fighting a desperate battle. He had already sent for aid to the Northmen, and Errol the Young came down. Just as the orcs of the Misty Mountains attacked Syrian f from behind, and the Balkoth were pressing from the front, Errol the Young came and rescued in the field of Celebrant. So, um, they could have did other stories. I would have rather have seen the Gondorian, the Gondorian kin strife might have been a better one. Then you understand where the, how, why Umbar are so important. They could have did so many more stories of the Third Age. They could have went to the Honorian, Arthod Arthodyne, Cardellani, Ruderan period. So for me, just looking at this trailer, I am disappointed in the storyline right from the start. The inaccuracies. Peter Jackson should know better by now. So I'm not going to watch this in a theater. To hell with it. Uh, it's too much. Too much departure from what Tolkien wrote down. Tolkien would definitely roll in his grave. <laughs> he would be like, what the hell is this? Ralph Bakshi... I don't know if Bakshi could do a better version than this. So that's my opinion of the trailer so far. I hope it's a it's a joke. I don't think it is. And we'll see. But all you Lord of the fans out there, let me know what you guys think of the trailer so far. And if you plan to watch the movie and what you found good or bad about it. Leave comments in the comment section. Until next time, I'm Roman Daisel. I am out of here.